Do you remember the first time when you looked at a price chart? I know that I did and it was around 15 years ago and after reading about a guy who quit his job to become a forex trader, whatever this meant I had no real idea back then, I did a Google search and I downloaded a demo account of MetaTrader 4. And when I first opened it up, I remember I was just overwhelmed. When you first open it up, you have this price chart, the black background with the, with the grid and you have the green and the white candlesticks. And I was so confused. I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what I was looking at. But then after watching a few videos about MT4, I learned that the bars you actually call candlesticks and that they represent the movement of price action. And a few videos later I learned about the parts of a candlestick that the high and the low you call the candlestick wicks and the open and the close are parts of the candlestick body. I learned that the candlesticks can represent different time intervals and that you can set a time frame to look at price charts for different periods and also durations. And every time I then watch the video, read a trading book or talk to a more experienced trader, I learned something new and a new part of chart reading and trading opened up to me. Be it price action patterns, candlestick formations, indicators, the impacts of news, the underlying fundamental drivers of markets, supply and demand theory, inflation, the importance of the reward to risk ratio, probabilistic thinking, market correlations and so on and so on. Slowly, every time I learned something new, the world of charts and trading was really unfolding in front of me. But all of those things, they had always been there, obviously, and I didn't invent them, obviously. I just discovered it and then new possibilities opened up to me once my mind knew what to look for. And people always say that as a new trader, you really don't know how much you don't know. However, this is not only limited to traders and it's not even only limited to new traders. This always holds up for anyone and at any point in time. Let me explain. Because no matter how skilled you are, how much you know in a field, how many years you have spent learning something new, it is impossible to know how much you don't know. Otherwise, you would already know. So you cannot know what you don't know or you would already know. Two years ago, we talked to Dr. Steenbarger, one of the most famous trading coaches and psychologists, I would say. And you can listen to that in episode 133 of our podcast. And he said that in his experience and in his practice, the number one predictor for trading success was curiosity. And I thought really among all of those things that a trader must learn, which is chart reading, self-discipline, patience, probabilistic thinking, money management, risk management, and all of those other things, curiosity is really the one thing that separates the pro from the amateur. And I kept thinking about it and I kept thinking about my own life, my own trading career, and also about the traders that I work with. And I thought, is this really true or does it just sound fancy and sound smart? But I came to the conclusion that after trading for 15 years myself, and I've been working with traders for around six, seven, eight years, somewhere around that, is that it actually does make sense. And I can see that in the traders that I mentor. Because the best traders that I have mentored are actually the ones that are curious. They are the ones that curiously ask questions, that explore the new ideas, they read a lot, read different areas, they try something new, they explore trading and all other areas in their life with curiosity and are always seeking to learn something new with an open mind, which is the key. They don't believe that they know everything already and they are ready to put everything to the test without preconceived ideas or prejudices. Those curious traders, they constantly and continuously unlock the previously unseen concepts and nuances in their trading and more and more parts of the trading world will unfold to them. And obviously that makes a lot of sense because think about it, if you're not curious, you're not even going to be drawn towards learning about whether it is price action, risk management, money management, probabilities or any of the other topics. So curiosity is really the first step that is going to lead you towards exploring new ideas. So without curiosity, there's no learning. And now some people may argue that it's not necessary to know everything. And we can argue actually about that since what does it mean to know everything? As we have seen, you cannot know when you have learned everything since you don't know what you don't know. And therefore 
you cannot know how much more there is until there is nothing more to learn. But I think we can leave this rabbit hole for another time and I want to move on, but I just want to say one thing in this context. And if you're a trader who is not profitable yet, who has not maybe even seen any progress yet, is that you have to be open-minded. You have to understand that there are things that you have to learn that you don't know now. So. So don't come with any prejudices. Don't come with any preconceived ideas about what you think is right. Really be open, explore as many new things as you can and really try to expand your knowledge as much as you can. But let's get back to today's topic now. So I'm coaching a few traders and there's one trader that really stands out currently because whatever I throw at him, he always embraces it and he tries it out and puts it to the test. Whether it's a seemingly unrelated mental exercise, a journaling routine that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a book that may seem trading unrelated, a trading exercise that may seem daunting, may take a lot of time and doesn't seem pleasant. Or when we talk about a subject that may seem very trading unrelated, he just does whatever is asked and then later evaluates after having put it to the test and after having gone through it, then he evaluates the effectiveness and his trading progress is really, really staggering. He has completely turned his trading around and he came to me when he was an amateur. He had almost no trading experience and his results were obviously not consistent and he was a losing trader. But now he has gone from losing to break even and now slowly becoming profitable, but he now has a very solid and deep understanding of trading psychology, a rock solid routine and also he has a lot of confidence in his own skills and in his strategy. And there's another trader in my group currently and he's the polar opposite. He comes with a lot of preconceived ideas. He never wants to try anything new. He always believes that he knows everything already and he always seems to know what the right thing would be. And he doesn't do the exercises. He doesn't do what I ask him to do because he, he always believes that that's not the right thing for him right now. And his progress is, as you would expect, really bad. He is as far from becoming a profitable trader as one can really be. However, both traders came to me because they were not satisfied with their performance and they were looking for help and assistance, which is already an important step because it does show that you understand that there are things in your trading that you need help with and you don't know how to fix it yourself. But then the next step is that you actually listen to feedback and most importantly, you get over your ego and you fully accept that there is so much more that you don't know and you have to broaden your horizon to get to the next step. Otherwise, you will always stuck where you're currently at. And I totally walk the talk as well. I never expect that I know everything when it comes to trading or mentoring traders. And I regularly go to other trading seminars. I fly out to different countries to get mentored by other more advanced people. I do buy courses, I read new books, and I'm always ready to change my approach when I realize that it's needed. And when I have learned something new, then I'm ready to make a change. I don't get my ego involved and I'm always interested in learning something new. And when we talk about those things, people always throw around the phrase that you have to think outside the box, but actually stepping outside the box can be quite unpleasant and it can be scary because you don't really know what awaits you when you leave your comfort zone and your box. It's easy to stay where you are. It's very comfortable. It's predictable. And that's why so many people are stuck in their small little echo chamber. We get stuck in our bubble too easily and then we stop growing. But I don't want to make this podcast too long for this week and I will continue with part two next Thursday because there's so much here that I would love to explore with you further. But I want to leave you with something very, very important now. And the key message here is that in order to get better and improve your skills, whether it's trading or anything else in your life, you really have to start being curious and actively reaching out to try new things and actively going outside of the box. And those are the things that I personally also do and I have seen firsthand that they actually work and really make a change. So read new books about topics that you always thought that don't interest you. And I'm leaving a list with some seemingly trading unrelated books in the description below that you may actually find very valuable as a trader or when it comes to growing your mental edge as well. Obviously, when you listen to this, you may be interested in podcasts. So I would also recommend that you start listening to new podcasts about something that you have never even thought about. It can be completely non-trading related as well. And what I often do is that when I read a new book and I find it intriguing and interesting, 
I go on Spotify and I search for that author and then I see what shows has the author be on or where, where has this topic and the book been discussed and then I look for other episodes and I listen to other episodes from that show and very often you will be able to follow a very interesting path that leads you down a road that you otherwise would never have explored and then you will learn so many new things along the way. Also, I would recommend to talk to new people and be curious about what they have to tell you. Or you can also just simply read biographies. And there are so many interesting biographies out there. I will leave also a few biographies in the video description or podcast description below. So if you want to check that out, they are trading non-related, but they will be really fascinating. I would always recommend that you start new hobbies, you sign up for a new class or you enroll in a new course. And I'm very sure that there are probably things that you always wanted to try, but you have been putting them off, right? So try that out and I would be really interested from you to hear what is that actually because I'm always myself also trying to find new ideas to try new things out. So let me know in the comments below what it is that maybe you have just recently picked up new. Maybe it's something that you want to do but you have not done. So let me know and also inspire others and let's get a conversation going in the comments below. And of course, this is also 100% true for trading because after all, this is a trading podcast. So read new things about trading, read new books about trading, go into a different area of trading that you have previously not explored. If you have been a swing trader, try day trading. If you have been a day trader, try swing trading. Learn something new about risk management. Read books about risk management. Read books about psychology. Start picking up a trading journal routine. Go to a mental course. Read about an indicator that you previously thought is not going to work out. Try as many new things as you can because every time you unlock something, you learn something and you never know what is going to await you on the other side. And let me conclude with one of my favorite thought exercises when it comes to this topic. And everything that you know now and everything that you do now, there was a point in your life in the past where you did it for the first time and previously it was unknown to you. Every food that you love to eat right now, you had to try it once for the first time before it could become your favorite food. Who is your most beloved person in your life right now? that person you once didn't know and it was a complete stranger before you started talking to him her for the first time your favorite hobby that you love to engage right now was once an activity that you didn't do and you had to do it for the first time once before it could become such an important part in your life and i love to remind myself about that all the time because it also means that many of the great things that you will love doing in one year and five years and ten years are still unhidden from you right now and it's up to you to uncover all of those amazing things that are already out there and are just waiting to be discovered. But you will only find your new favorite food, your new favorite artist, your new best friend, your new passion and so on when you actually throw yourself out there, you leave your box, you leave your comfort zone and you try new things out. And you will only also get better as a new trader if you start doing new things as well because everything that you have done previously led you to this point right now. But it's not enough to get you to the next stage. So explore curiously.